Hey there, and welcome to the daily podcast where wisdom smacks us with kisses or love taps. I'm Michelle Spiva, a wisdom strengthening coach, your host, and practical priestess of wisdom. Join us daily to gain wisdom and mental strength as we tackle innovative thinking, address emotional and behavioral life traps, and yes, provide you with some practical how-tos to wrap it all up. So settle in or crank up the speed 2x, whatever gets your mental processes firing as we dive in. Stay tuned. Hey there, and welcome to today's podcast. This is Michelle Spiber, your Practical Priestess of Wisdom, with today's podcast of Wisdom Smack. And so today, we're actually going to be talking about an acronym that is uh, for the internet savvy called IDGI, which stands for I Don't Get It. And so I want you to stick with me on the flip as I talk about why other people's IDGI isn't your problem. Stick with me. It's going to be good. All right. Thank you so much for joining me today. And, you know, I am nosy when it comes to knowledge. Now, about other people's business, I don't care too much. But about new stuff, curiosity, thy name IB. And so I was coming across uh, some new acronyms and there was one that stood out and I immediately knew what it meant. You know, when I sounded it out, I was like, oh, I know what that means. And the acronym is IDGI, meaning I don't get it. And of course, I, you know, went to Urban Dictionary and some others to check out to make sure that that's what it was. And of course, it means the same thing online as it does in person. It can usually have two main meanings, meaning literally, I don't get it. Please explain. Please clarify. Or it could mean a, a kind of like a little passive aggressive slight saying, I don't get it. You know, like dismissive. Like, what's your point? And that's the one I kind of take issue with, always have, probably always will. And so today I was um, looking at uh, some some things because, of course, you know, I'm always trying to uh, make sure I get these books right and make sure that I have information for you guys. And so today was a long writing day uh, working on a book that I am currently working on. And I took a little uh, break and I was reading. Inc. Magazine, and they had an article today, and it was about uh, advice or uh, something that a um, Harvard grad student told Jeff Bezos back in 97, right before he was going to go public with his company. And the gist of it is, is that the graduate uh, student was being a little, you know, a little haughty when he said, you know, hey, I'm pretty sure you're a nice guy and all of that. But basically, take my advice, you need to sell to Barnes & Noble. And I thought it was the funniest thing because there are many stories about people trying to tell Jeff Bezos, you know, what not to do in his early years. There is even that famous picture of him sitting behind a desk with a um, vinyl sign of Amazon. It didn't even have a logo yet. It was just Amazon (laughs) printed out on it and him in there supposedly by himself just working on his business. And it's kind of like one of those um, memes that you look at while you're working on your business by yourself with a lonely desk and saying, if Jeff can do it, I can do it too. And so I I looked at it and I read the article, it's a real short article, but there was so much uh, wisdom popping off in the the wisdom smacks coming that I was like, oh my gosh, that's that's it. And so today I just want to kind of remind you that other people's slights or misunderstandings or not being able to understand what you're going through isn't your problem. And that's not just for your business, that's for your life, for who you are, what you believe in and what you want to do. And This is one of the things that I want to make sure that I hopefully drive home today with some kind of excitement for you. And that is that 
if you have a desire and a drive, and maybe you even have the vision for where you want to go, it does not mean that everybody is always going to be able to see your vision, nor are they going to always be able to, in good conscience, support your vision. And the reason for that, and the article kind of talked about this as well, is that you're dealing with a future and they are dealing with probably history and the present at best. You see, and this is this kind of strikes home for me because I've had a lot of people try to, you know, give me wise advice for, you know, when things don't go as I would like for them to, but they don't necessarily see my vision. They don't see uh, where I'm going. And so they try to lovingly give me correction and give me unsolicited advice, by the way, of, uh, well, why don't you just go and do this or do that, you know, or, you know, and and so I had to understand. And I actually, (laughs) I I processed this a couple of weeks ago. I'll just be honest with you uh, when I was going through it. But I, I remember writing in my journal that it's not their job to try to see my future. It's my job to see my future and to hold my future fast, no matter what the present looks like. And lo and behold, someone else must have been on that same wavelength and put out a similar article. I'll make sure I drop the link in the uh, in the in the show notes for you today. And so I like the way they put it. And they now they were talking about, of course, with regards to business. But this is your life, your life choices, what you want out of life and all of that. And so uh, from this article, it's a fairly short read. They said, when you have a business based on a vision of the future rather than the present, understand that the majority of your critics will likely be looking from the perspective of the present. They see the now and they have a certain belief of how the now will influence the future. Sometimes, though, now will be rendered swiftly irrelevant by a fast moving future. And the future we're currently living in has moved at um, far too fast a pace for many people's liking. And so it goes on to say, ignore them as Jeff Bezos did. Anyone who criticizes your business using a framework of the for, for ignore anyone who criticizes your business using a framework for the right now. And I said, amen, amen, amen. <laughs> and I will say this part too. And now this part is it borders on the hypocritical because come on, you guys. I talk to you guys daily about wisdom smacks, insights, cool stuff. And um, you're my family. You know, I I'm, I consider you my family. You rock with me. I rock with you. But there is this study, and I and I wish I had grabbed the the journal so that um, I could let you know which one. But it's a recent study that came out in 2019 that says that those people who offer a lot of advice, especially unsolicited advice, have an intense need for the power it gives them as a secondary benefit to replace the power they're missing in their everyday lives. And I was like, wow, okay. I mean, it, it, to me, it sounds like common sense once you know it. But think about that. If you're finding that you have people telling you all the time, I don't get it. I just don't see what you're trying to do. It makes no sense. You are counteractive to everything that I know and trust. Can't you see that that you're 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 doing things that are not going to help? Where are you going to be in six months when this doesn't work? Where are you going to be when no one follows or gets what you're trying to do? I don't get it. It's not clear. It's too complex. It's over people's heads. The, people don't want that, you know, and on and on and on, you might be having that in your life. But I want to tell you that criticism comes from the present and it is trying to impose its will on your future. And there are too many times there have been people who have taken people's criticisms based on the now as gospel to override their own visions. And I will say this. I know that there are, there are people in my life right now that if you told them, oh, this will never get back to her, they will probably tell you, she drives me crazy because you won't listen, <laughs> you know? And 
I understand that they try to do this out of love. And I understand that their advice is, you know, in the best of what they can give me. And that's that's well and good. But I didn't ask. And this is not to say anything about anyone trying to love someone through their uh, hard times, their struggles or whatever. It's simply to say that for you, if you're going to struggle, struggle for the stuff you really want. It's hard to struggle for something that you're doing because you think other people will um, uh, leave you alone or uh, uh, you'll fit in. I, and and I, I'm I'm just saying that, that that is something that you might want to consider. Because in this life, you're going to have struggles, you're going to have problems, you're going to have ups and you're going to have downs. So you might as well uh, have all of those struggles and ups and downs doing something that you want to do, doing something that you're called to do, doing something that you feel in your gut is something that you want to be led to do. And I will say this as well, that When you are in that space that you're truly walking forward to what it is you're supposed to do, I truly believe that the world becomes blind to what you're doing because it's a faith walk anyway. If everybody knew and could see clearly your path, then why would you need to walk it? Why would you need to to do it? Some of the most powerful and innovative things that have happened have been because people chose to obey their own inner North Star, their own compass, their own Polaris, if you will. Um, A lot of times to the consternation of other people that were frustrated that they weren't listening to them. Because I'm going to say it, I don't believe that when people say, I don't get it, you know, I don't believe they're trying to douse your hopes. I really don't believe they're trying to steal your dreams. I really believe that they are presupposing on you what they think the future can hold based on what you see in the now. Now, in my notes, I put this in here and I wanted to make sure that I said it because I thought it was real good. And I still think it's real good. And I'm going to say it right now. And that is that, uh, a lot of people are are looking at life through trending. We are really in love with trends and uh, we have websites dedicated to them and there is nothing wrong with trends. But what I will say is this, understand that trends are all about historical events. When you see a trend, there is nothing um, that's not predictable. There's nothing that can't be backed up with some type of data because a trend is simply the aftermath of what has happened. And some people try to use a trend to project. I used to get paid by corporations to do that very thing. But eventually, when you've been in the game long enough and you've worked with trending analysis long enough and you start to see the probability of your trends being right are just about as good as if you guessed, then you start learning that there's something else that you need to start looking for. And that comes into the realm of uh, patterns and waves. And I've been talking about that a lot on uh, a lot of the podcasts. So y'all hear me well, because there's something to this. Instead of just looking at the trending analysis, the historical data, and what uh, people have been doing, within the trends are patterns. But then you're, it's not just patterns that, is going, that are going to help you understand what the future might bring. And I can't even tell you that what I'm about to tell you is absolute either. But there is something about looking at the patterns, and then looking at or finding the outer fringes of something, uh, going out into the deep end of the sea or, or, or the ocean and starting to look at the undercurrents that are making the water ripple. I did a podcast uh, last year uh, that was talking about Watch the Simmer. And it was the premise of my grandmother had taught me that the most opportune time to uh, 
watch your food if you're cooking it and to try to keep your food at that particular state is when it's simmering. It's caught between uh, standing still and boiling, but that the chemical processes of the seasonings in the food, that's, that is the opportune honeypot, if you will. And it's the same thing with what you're trying to do in your life right now. You're trying to keep your life at a simmer. And why are you trying to keep it at a simmer? It's because at that particular time, that's when you start realizing what are your seasons, what are your peaks and your valleys, and you start to learn how to find your rhythm to get into the most opportune placement to be able to ride ride a peak and be able to take advantage of it if you're paying attention. And so instead of trends, you're riding waves. And so when you take that and you look at somebody that says, I-D-G-I, I don't get it. You are immediately, you should be immediately aware that that person is a trend person when you are a wave person. You see, with trends, like I said before, they are determined by what has come before. They live in the past and the present at best. But a wave, a wave lives in the future because a wave, you ride it, you get in front of it, and you're able for that wave to push you forward. And I've had to learn through the years that if I'm depending on a trend to tell me what's coming, I'm already sunk because I'm already too late. And I want you to understand that too, that you need to trust whatever it is in your heart of hearts, in your soul, in your mind that you want to do. So what if it's never been done or so what if it's too big? So what if it doesn't look like people think? So what if it's convoluted and it's not quite clear and you don't even know how to start, but you know that you got little points of light that you're like, okay, I want to do this or I'm going to do that. Trust yourself and make it make it all right because that is waves calling to you. That is you becoming a wave maker. And that's the wonderful thing about it. Now, yes, I know you're going to be like, well, Michelle, well, why do they call people trendsetters and all this kind of stuff? Because those people have historically proven that time and time again, they were able to ride a wave and then someone recorded it and it became a trend. And so it's nothing different. It's just that people need to realize that first comes the wave, then comes the trend. But understand too, that those people who are riding waves, you run a higher probability of a wipeout. And so there is a bit of danger in being out there, understanding uh, that you're out there alone because a lot of people might not understand what you're trying to do. A lot of people might be trying to help you and instead they are causing you pain and and, and causing you uh, failures or obstacles to achieving. So be aware that if you are going to do whatever it is you need to, there are pros and cons to everything. And it takes that that. St- That It takes that confident person to continue to go through with what it is you want to do. And so I need you to also understand that not everyone needs to understand what you're trying to do. That's why their IDGI is not your problem. And I'm telling you this from a place of spending too many years and too much energy trying to explain myself, trying to teach people around me to be okay with what I'm doing. Your life doesn't have to look like my life and my life doesn't have to look like your life. Can you just let me live? (laughs) You know, that kind of thing. And I finally got to the point over recent years where I was like, that's not my job. I need to use my energy for what I'm doing. Remember yesterday when we talked about how to grow your concentration and I talked about the the three rules that uh, Donda Pandi, um, the spiritual teacher and monk talked about, and it was all about energy. He was like, first, you need um, to stop uh, spilling it. Stop it. Then you need to conserve it. And then you need um, to be able to use it appropriately. And I was like, yeah, that's really good. But it takes on a, um, 
it takes on a different uh, feel when you're actually going through it. Now, let me make sure I don't muddle this. So yesterday we talked about some ways to start being able to really grow your ability to concentrate. And um, I took that part of a training he did when he talked about the ways to manage your energy. So the first one was, stop. he said, stop hemorrhaging your energy. And if you use the word hemorrhage, that means that there is some type of wound or injury. And looking at your energy and looking at the fact that you might be injured, are you hemorrhaging? Are you bleeding out your energy for having to fight or or defend what it is that you want to do? What makes you tick the way you want to go? If that's the case, then you need to stop it. And to stop it means you need to get some healing. You need to, uh, con- as he said, the next step was to conserve it. So to stop hemorrhaging, bleeding all over the place, trying to help everybody see your vision, trying to make sure everybody's okay so that you can make everybody uh, okay and comfortable. It's actually, it's really, it really it takes some intestinal fortitude because usually the people that you are around where you are expending all this energy are the people who love you the most and want the best and want the best for you. And so it, it takes a little bit. So the next thing is, is number two is conserve that energy. Grow quiet. There is a reason why people tell you, stop telling your business. I did a podcast about that. Don't tell your plans to everybody. And again, more studies have shown that when you talk to people or you express it, or especially if you share it on social media, there is some kind of underlying gratification that takes a lot of the forward focus and the forward movement out of it so that you actually slow yourself down from achieving your goal by sharing it. So shut up. Conserve your energy. Keep it to yourself. Keep it close to your breast. And the third one is to accumulate your energy. Yeah. And the reason why at this particular time, in this particular situation that I believe the third one is probably the most important of them all is because it takes a lot of energy to sustain. And that's part of what this game is all about. Your sustaining power. When people around you are like, I don't get it, and nobody is able to see your vision, and you've got to walk by yourself, even though what you're trying to do requires a team, you're going to use a lot of energy to be able to make it through. And um, it is, I think, wisdom's way of helping us to get prepared. And that's part of like when you look at a big project. And uh, if you're wise, you're going to, quote unquote, count up the cost. You're going to do a budget, a plan. You're going to look at the materials and the personnel you're going to need. And then you're going to even put in a contingency plan to say, okay, well, for all the stuff I forgot, all the overages or whatever, and you're going to throw in a certain amount of um, percentage. That's that part of accumulating your energy. That's so that you won't give out, that you will be able to continue to do what it is that you need to do. And just like Jeff Bezos, (laughs) hopefully you'll be able to get to the point where you look back on that unsolicited advice and you're able to forgive people because they are able to even benefit from what you've been able to do. And it makes it all full circle and better. Um, recently I did a podcast called, have you cycled? And that is an insider wisdom that a lot of people who are in business for themselves, entrepreneurial go-getters, uh, against the, the grain marching to, to their own beat. That's something that we all have in our lives and that will scare the regular person who can't handle this kind of lifestyle. And to cycle means that you've had some success, but then you've had failure or lost it all or had to start over. And the reason why we talk about that cycle is because when you have gone through a a cycle of success and then loss, 
It helps to round those rough edges off of you and give you an insight and a learning that you could never have if you had not gone through that. Yes, there is humbling, but there is more to it. And the reason why there's more to it is because you start to learn the cycles of life. You start to learn that everything is uh, not forever. Uh, I have a podcast coming up that I don't usually like to tell y'all all the different podcasts that I have uh, scheduled for you, but I have a podcast coming up where I'm going to be dealing more with understanding uh, when things come to an end and how to move to the next thing, how to gain that energy to keep going. Um, but for today, when someone says, I don't get it, I want you to understand that it's not your job to make them get it. It's not your problem. It really isn't. And as long as they are not actively doing things to try to shut you down, to try to keep you from doing what it is that you said or want to do, then you're fine. And I know it'll be really hard for a lot of us because a lot of us want to please people. And people try to make that people pleasing thing something bad. And it's not bad unless it goes too far, unless you can't keep your own self-identity. But if you are an empathetic person who cares about other people. You're going to want to please people. It's, it's just part of what it is. Great customer service, great friendships all depend on your being able to connect with other people. You know, be careful of the person who is very easy to be like, I don't care about you. And they can shut it off at a, <laughs> at a moment's notice. You know, co- I mean, We do love our sociopaths and most sociopaths are are wonderful people, but just beware that you might be dealing with a sociopath. And if you are not one, which is usually the case, it's going to be hard for you to shut it off. And I'm not going to dare tell you that because it's hard to shut it off when you care about people, when you have an empathetic understanding and connection with um, other people. And so, yes. I totally get that you want to please these folks. And yes, I totally get that. I just told you it's going to be hard, but I'm still going to say you got to push through and you got to understand that just because someone does not get your vision, just because they don't get the path that you're trying to walk does not mean that you have to change for them or that you have to make them understand. Now, in the last few minutes, I'm going to give you a little bit of tough love. And that tough love is this that if you come with hat in hand, so say for instance, you need some help, whether it be uh, emotional support, financial support, or otherwise, when they say what they're going to say, you got to take it, especially if you're asking for their help. You've got to endure it. But you have to make sure that you endure it And if they put any stipulations on how they're going to help you predicated on you changing, then you got to be strong enough to walk away. And I know that is very controversial. And I might get some remarks or some screaming and yelling, you know, as you're listening to this. But that is what happens. If you go to someone and you ask them for their help and they don't see your vision, but they're willing to help you, you got to listen to the lecture. You got to listen to them tell you what you should do. And you got to be willing to be okay with that. And it takes, oh my gosh, it takes a lot of emotional growth and flexibility to be able to handle that. Because we, we, we interact with each other. We love each other. We feel for each other. And you got to understand, just like Dr. Brene Brown says, Reframe to understand that most of the time, people are doing the best they can with what they have. And they're not trying to be diabolically mean to you. They're not trying to make you hurt. They're not trying to sabotage you or even hinder you. They're trying to do the best they can with what they have. Even if that means that they are transposing their fears onto you and trying to keep you from realizing or experiencing their greatest fears whether that be parents, friends, colleagues, or whatever. But, you know, understand that. And it it takes a lot of growth and it takes a lot of soul searching to be okay with that. And I wish I could tell you it gets easier, it doesn't. But still, 
It is up to you to continue to grow and to continue to understand, especially if you walk the uncommon path. Your life, your choices are going to make people afraid for you. You're going to make people uncomfortable, apprehensive, and you're going to make people have to have tough, what they would call tough conversations with you because they love you and they think that they're helping you. And I will say this also in the last few minutes that we have, when people are saying, I don't understand this. I don't get, why is it that you always want to blah, 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 blah. If you are continually asking them to support your vision and you're not willing to do what it takes on your own and only coming to them at the last, 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 then maybe you do need to consider what they're saying because you may not have grown grown to the point where you need to be in order to walk, walk this path. And there's no shame in that. No shame in being willing to go and get a few more life lessons, to get a few more resources or whatever it is. But understand that if you're about this, and you don't want to be shut down and have to deal with other people's uh, I don't get it and all of that, then you got to do whatever it takes for you to be able to support yourself. And that means eating some humble pie to do whatever it is you need to do to keep going. So I know this was hard, but I had to say it. And yes, my time is up. I thank you for yours. This has been Michelle Spivey, your Practical Priestess of Wisdom with another podcast of Wisdom Smack. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and guess what? I'll see you tomorrow. And that's going to do it for today's podcast of Wisdom Smack with Michelle Spiva. If you like this podcast, please help us get the word out. Like, comment, subscribe, and even share. And if you really like it, please help us continue to get the word out by considering using this show's link for Amazon. So when you want to go to Amazon and you do all of your general shopping, Uh, please use michellespiva.com forward slash AMZ. It's simple as that. It doesn't cost you anything extra. And this show might receive a little bit of commission that will go towards helping to further get these episodes out to you and to others. So thank you so much for listening. This has been Michelle Spiva with Wisdom Smack. Bye.